So this is the grunge board cover to my 8x12 journal and as you can see one of the sets of holes will be completely covered over when it's finished. So I'm going to begin by putting down a layer of matte medium from Mod Podge. Now this runs out um, so I do have another pot of matte medium from Mod Podge um, and as you can see in a little while I do hold the two up side by side because one's got a blue label and one's got a yellow label but they all say the same thing apart from the blue one that just says paper under the Mod Podge. So I'll explain why there's a little bit of confusion between those two bottles in a little while. I've managed to dig my way through the foil seal on that matte medium. I started to apply it to the base of or over the grunge board so that I can lay down my first layer of a printed map. So this is a piece of a map that I got in a Happy Mail recently and all I did was take a particular set uh, or portion of the map and I scanned it uh, and then printed it on my inkjet printer. So I'm just going to drop the sheet straight on top of the Mod Podge um, and I know that because I've not put any on the back of the sheet it is going to go a little bit wrinkly but this is deliberate this time. I want there to be a kind of wrinkly kind of old leathery kind of look to this once it's actually all down and stuck down. So you'll see why when I start adding the paint a little bit later. So now I've got a real decent coating of the matte medium, well I say matte medium, the Mod Podge onto the top of my map. I'm now going to tear some pages from an old copy of Journey to the Centre of the Earth by Jules Verne um, and add some book text fragments to it as well. Um, this was a book that was due to be destroyed going to landfill so I did um, rescue it so that there was at least a little bit of extra life left in it before it was destroyed. So I'm just going to tear random chunks out of the pages um, but I'm always going to make sure that I stick them the right way up. I want all the text going in the right direction. So I'm not going to do anything at an angle, I'm not going to do anything at a diagonal, I'm not going to do anything upside down. I want all the text readable in the background. Now once I've got all the book text fragments exactly where I want them, I'm going to make sure that everything has got a real nice cover and a real good seal. So I'm going to go over the entire thing and make sure that it's all completely sealed. So all I need to do now is to dry off this um, Mod Podge and then I can explain to you the reason why there's a little bit of confusion between the two bottles, the one with the blue cover and the one with the yellow cover. Okay, so you can see what it says here. It says matte, matte, yep, matte. This one also says matte. Yeah. So you saw me start off with this one and it run out and start with this one. And does this look matte to you? No, it doesn't. So, what's the difference? This one says paper and that one just doesn't say anything at all. Water-based sealer, glue and finish. Water-based sealer, glue and finish exactly the same. So what is the difference? And why are they saying it's matte when it obviously isn't? 
Anyway, annoying silver, because that now needs to go in the bin because I hate glossy and shiny finishes. And now we'll probably have to cover that in clear gesso. Right, on we go. So here's the clear gesso. This is the Prima Marketing clear gesso and I'm going to give it a very good going over with the clear gesso, which is going to take off that shine from that supposedly matte Mod Podge. Now I did end up giving the bottle to Ian so he can use it in his steampunk projects rather than throw it away. I'm not that wasteful. Okay, time to dry it off and let's see whether it's worked. Yes. So I can now begin to add some colour to the page and this is the Vintage Photo Distress Paint and I'm going to completely cover the entire page with it and then blend it all together and dab it with a baby wipe. And as you can see as I'm wiping the paint across the page it's collecting in those wrinkles, it's collecting in those little tucks in the paper which makes it or gives it a very kind of leathery look so it begins to look like an old leather bound journal. So I just need to bring out my heat gun and then I can begin adding in some aging and some grunging around the edges. I've already gone around once with the potting soil archival link but I'm giving it a second coat once it was dry just to deepen that colour a little bit more. Because the front of my journal has a steampunk feel I wanted to bring in a little bit of that steampunk imagery into the back of the journal also. So I'm using the Cogs and Gears stencil from Indigo Blue and the Jet Black Archival Ink from Ranger. So to make the cover look like a little bit more like a travel journal I've taken some of the travel ephemera from Tim Holtz and I'm just going to stick that down onto the back of the journal. Uh, and I'm just using the multi-purpose glue because I don't, I don't really want to use um, any more of the matte, supposedly matte medium from Mod Podge because um, I don't want it to have a shine to it. So until I can purchase some more of the real stuff then I'll have to stick to using other types of glue. So as you can see I've already positioned them where I want them to go and then I'm just going to stick them down onto the back cover. So once everything's nicely stuck down I'll just go over that a little bit with the potting soil just to turn it in. I've added a few more of the cogs in the top left and the top right hand corners if you can see and now I'm going to use the sepia archival ink and this splattered stencil from Tim Holtz just to add a little bit more detail and a little bit more variation in the colour into the background with the splatters. So as you can see just adding a little bit more grunge and dirt around the edges with the inks. So it's now time just to reopen the holes where my book rings go and my journal so I'm just using the point of a pencil just to prod through uh, and then I've got the perfect placed holes for adding this back into my journal 
um, through the book rings when it's complete. So the final touch for the back of my journal, I'm going to use these remnant rubs from Tim Holtz again. I'm just going to lay them directly down onto the, the journal and I'm just going to use a bone folder just to rub them directly on. I'm not particularly bothered if they break up, if it gets all choppy, if it all gets, gets um, bits missing or extra bits come off because I want it to look old and grungy. You also get a popsicle stick with these remnant rubs. Um, so I do have a go with that as well to see whether or not it does work any better than my bone folder. But actually I found the bone folder works far better than the popsicle stick, so I go back to the bone folder. So I'm just going to go around the, the back cover, just rubbing certain areas of the, or adding the rub-ons, directly onto the back of the page. I'm not particularly bothered about getting them exact. It, it, it doesn't, it's not an exact science, it's just one of those um, added extra details that just helps to pull the entire of the design of the back cover together. I think just adding that little arrow in the top right hand corner, I think that's it. I don't think I need to add any more to this page. I'm going to call it done. I hope you've enjoyed watching me finally get round to covering the back of my 8x12 journal. You've already seen the front of the journal being done, now you've seen the back. So if you have enjoyed watching the video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of this video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again in a few days. Bye for now.